I have here is a vintage, very vintage, Svea number 14. It says number 14. Hopefully you can see that. And it's got made in, made in Sweden patent um, on it. This is the best stove in the world around the outside here. Here it says Sievert. I'm going to close that. Here it says Sievert. And over here it says Svea. Um, it's an old one. Very old. Checking the catalogs available on the internet, it appears that this Svea burner is designated burner number 805 and is found first in the 1908 Svea catalog. By 1912, the number 805 tube style silent burner is making its appearance on both the Svea simplex and duplex home ranges. The 1915 Svea stove flyer introduces the Svea number 14 and shows it equipped with the Svea 805 silent tube burner. However, the 1915 Svea catalog shows a different burner, a number 813 burner on the Svea number 14 stove. So it's possible that there was a transition period around 1915, or possibly the owner of this catalog has the date wrong on the catalog. I would conjecture that this burner had disappeared by 1920. But the most unique thing is that it has this burner. If you can see that up in there, it's actually made of twisted tubes. Let me see. And it's not like a conventional what we think of as a conventional silent burner, which is, is very different structure. And a bowl is soldered, or not soldered, but a braze to the, that platform of twisty tubes. Then here we look at, we have a lid, it says Svea on it right there. There's a lid, and we take the lid off, and underneath is an inner cap. And if we pull that inner cap out, First thing we see is that, oh, it has a spigot tube that hangs down below the inner cap. The spigot tube is crimped. And then what we have is a ring that is brazed to the inside of the bowl. And this is a ring. Let's see if we can yeah, help you out understanding there. And it's actually brazed. It's got... Uh, there's two little vent spots right here, one and one right there. If we can see that up through there. Is this old style of burner that has the, the ring in here. I really like that. Also, we have a uh, self-igniting feature here where the alcohol goes in here and it directs flame up here and uh, will self-ignite. So I'm going to fire this one up so you can see how it looks. And then I'll talk about what my project is. And there you go. Last of the alcohol burned off over here. Look, we still got this reservoir. So now I can put a couple pumps in here. And off we go. Oh, look at all that. It's still going. You'd really take your time. So if you know you're busy chopping carrots or something, you'd be all set. All right, now we're, we're finally there. All of the alcohol is gone. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to speed. And that's, that's really just a, a lovely flame. Look at that. That's just great. So I try not to use this one too much. It's mostly just for demo purposes because, of course, it is a, a rare and unusual burner and I want to keep it working for a long time. All right. Well, here you go. You see how it looks. Get that tiny itty-bitty simmer going, too. So I was asked to make the lid for one of these burners, and this is the burner that was sent to me by my client, and uh, it ended up having more problems than I had expected. You can really see underneath there pretty well how the, the feed tubes are coming up and actually going around, and then form a U-tube, come back around, come around this way, 
and back to the other feed tube. So it's just one solid piece of tubing there. That's pretty cool. I noted that there was some problems in the feed tubes right where they attached to the nut. It was all kind of funky there and I cleaned it up with a brass bristle brush and what I ended up seeing is a lot of solder. Now solder shouldn't be on burners because solder will melt on burners. It's too low temperature. You can use silver brazing or, or brazing filler but solder is bad on burners and unfortunately once it connects to the brass it can be difficult to remove. So what's under these solder patches I didn't know and that was one of my first things I was going to have to address and and we'll see how I do that. And when we take the uh, we take the inner cap out <laughs> oh boy here's the problem what happens with these sorts of burners that have the ring is if they're subjected to underburn oh look <laughs> the ring can be burnt away or even just through use over time. I hope you can see that. Look, there's just nothing there. This ring is, is shot. So the other thing I have to do is replace the ring. Now I'll have to remove this ring, make a new ring, braze it in place. So my first move was just to re go ahead and remove the solder as much as I could by heating it up and flinging it off, or once it's liquid, scrubbing it off with a brass bristle brush. Um, and just you know try to get as much off as possible before I clean up the rest of it with some very fine glass bead blasting. All right. Well, it ain't perfect, but we got the bulk of it off. Now there's just a thin layer of solder that needs to be removed from there. So, see where I get to next. You see how, even though I've gotten solder splatters on this other metal here, it didn't really stick because it wasn't clean. Dirty metal won't take solder. So, okay, so now I've, I've gone ahead and uh, bead blasted this quite a bit. And you can see there's no longer any silver. It's taken on that bronzy, uh, kind of bronzy, brassy color because I've essentially removed all the residual solder. And you can also now really see the damage that's on these tubes now that the solder, obscuring solder, has gone away. So that's this one, pretty well poofed in. And the other side looks pretty decent. Cleaned up anyway. I mean, still kind of damaged. This looks like sloppy wrench work, but I see all this, this peened-like surface here too. I'm not sure what happened here. Hmm, interesting. So, um, I'm thinking, I got this drill bit out, and I'm thinking I could almost this just fits inside the opening here. Maybe I could uh, use a little magic and bend those tubes out a little bit. So I have a complete set of machinist bits, uh, numbered bits, and they're in different sizes, uh, separated by just a few thousands. And alternating, uh, annealing the tubes, and then running a new bit in there and kind of wiggling it and forcing it and bending it, I was able to get a lot of uh, restoration of the tubes so they're not so crushed and I'm gonna do more yet but I'm just stopping here because I didn't want you to miss that I've also started removing that perforated ring and that's where I am with that and basically I just take a, a pair of pliers and wind it up like you would a sardine can and it rips along the holes of the burner but we'll see how these turn out in just a little bit so after running through a series of bits, I, I think I used like six or eight different sizes, I was able to get the tubes pretty well expanded out. There were actually no cracks or fractures. Uh, they were just squashed. And once I got them unsquashed, I could peer down the tubes and see that there is a lot of carbon packed in there from where it had deposited behind the squashiness. So I decided to clean the burner. I used the original heat and air method designed by 
all the manufacturers from early on in the last century. You can even see an example of a heat and air cleaning device in the Svea 1915 catalog. The idea is you heat the burner and as you can see I have a fitting it's fitted into. I have a connection to compressed air. You can see those sparks coming out as I'm releasing air into the burner right now. Uh, so you heat the burner, admit a little air. I use 40 PSI max. Um, I have a valve that I can control. Each time you see sparks, I'm allowing more, like right there, I'm allowing more air into the burner. Then I turn off the air, heat it a little more, and then go ahead and admit more air. Never use, never, ever, ever use what some people call heat and quench, where you heat a burner and then dash it into cold water. That will cause damage to the burner. I know because I've had lots of people who've used it and sent me their burners to repair after the joints were loosened or cracked and caused leakage. Heat and quench is a means of cleaning a burner that only, only very foolish people use. It's a very bad idea. Don't do it. Heat and air, like I'm showing you how to do, is the way to go with these burners. So with the burner clean, it's now time to go back to clean up that perforated ring residue that's in the burner. I used a Dremel tool with various um, cutting bits and mostly just abrasive rubber bits to bring uh, all that re residue down and get it clean. And then went ahead and used fine glass beads and bead blasting to clean the inside of the burner so that I could go ahead and get ready for brazing. But first, I need a replacement ring to, <laughs> to stick in there. So on the lathe, I took a, a chunk of brass thick-walled tubing, machined it both inside and out to get the proper dimensions, both inside and out, of the original ring that was in place. Then I set it on my vertical mill with an indexing uh, head um, and indexed the holes around and drilled the three rolls of three rows of holes in the same size as the original burner. Test fitting it came out great and then I just part it off and make it the right height. So the next step is to go ahead and braise it. First thing I do with the ring is I mask off all those little holes with some Higgins Black India ink. India ink is what you use in fountain pens and you can get it at stationery stores. It doesn't have to be Higgins. Any kind of Black India ink works good. I put it on both the inside and the outside, keeping it away from the edge I want to braise. And once that's done and dry, let it dry for an hour, then I go ahead and put on the flux along the edges of the cap where it's going to attach, well, of the ring, where it's going to attach to the burner. I carefully place it inside the burner bowl, and I use a small metric ruler to make sure I have it centered. And then I take little cut pieces of brazing filler wire and dip them into the flux and place them along the bottom edge inside of the ring. One last check for measurements just to make sure everything's perfectly centered and lined up correctly. You only get one shot at this. And then it's off to grab a couple torches and heat that puppy up and get that silver braze filler to melt and flow out and hold the ring into the burner bowl. After it's all done, the flux makes it look kind of nasty, but by taking it over and glass bead blasting it, it gets all nice and clean. There's also a little mechanical work I did inside there too, where I had a little too much uh, brazing filler here and there. Compared to the original burner, with the cap in place, the inner cap in place, it looks really good. So now I've got all that done, I can go do what I originally intended, which is to build a jig a form essentially to make a new lid for the cap. So you see I've got a piece of steel, I've made it the correct outer diameter, now I've domed it and polished it so it's nice and smooth. You can see it has that same profile. 
And here I'm going to do the corresponding mating piece. And you can see I've dished that out. And that's going to fit on my inner purse part to actually act as a press. You can see the two portions. The hole is so I can pop that cap out. I grease everything up really good. I take a piece of round brass flat stock and use my bench vise just to squish that puppy together. While the outer part wrinkles, I cut most of that off and it's really not a problem. I go ahead and shape it and bring it down to the right size and you can see it's a good facsimile of the original outer lid for this 805 burner. I rebuilt this burner, I cleaned up and straightened the tubes, tore out the old ring, made a new ring, put that in there, cleaned everything up good. And now I made this press for making a replacement lid. This is out of steel. And this is what it produces. So this is my replacement lid. Here's the original. It fits on there like that. Fits on here like that. The uh, press is designed to fit the original cap, so this should be a faithful reproduction. We're gonna go ahead and fire it up and see how well it does. So there's a rebuilt burner and it looks like it's working pretty well. The new lid works pretty well. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please link, like, and subscribe. Thanks a lot.